the force of faith the force of faith there is no believer who seeks to manifest greater works as desired by Jesus Christ who will ignore walking by faith and walking in faith the Bible has a lot to say about faith number one Hebrews 11 and verse 1 it says now faith is I like Paul now faith is the substance he says of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen verse 2 it says for by it this force called faith elders obtained a good report and when you read all the remaining renditions down to the end of that verse they, th those were the good reports that were obtained by faith in fact if we go to 33 33 begins to give us a a, a very intelligent representation of these reports through faith they subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stop the mouth of lions 34 it says quench the violence of fire escapes the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong what's valiant in fight turn to flight the armies of the aliens look at this women received their dead to life and it says others though they were tortured and had the opportunity to accept deliverance by faith they refused they refused deliverance because they wanted to obtain a better resurrection 36 it says others who had trial of cruel mockings and all of these things the bible says all of these things they were called elders and they obtained good report by faith let me give you two reasons why we need faith in our walk with God number one the first reason why every believer needs to understand the subject of faith and then to walk and live by faith is because there are realities beyond the scope of our sight beyond the scope of science please write there are realities beyond the scope of sight and beyond the scope of science Colossians 1 16 to 18 there are realities beyond the scope of sight that means what your optical eyes can see and then beyond the scope of science the human nature is trained scientifically and trained environmentally hallelujah these are the two principal ways by which we are trained to understand and to deal with our environment there is environmental conditioning and then scientifically from the time you begin to go to school formally or informally you begin to learn how to use the techniques of science to relate with your world but the truth is that there are realities beyond the scope of sight there are realities beyond the scope of science even science agrees that the human eye which has 2020 vision cannot see everything are we together it is very possible i don't know if it has happened to you that a very small insect will bite you you feel the pain the pain is real but you cannot you almost cannot find the insect biting you yet it is there and it is not like it's a demonic thing it's just too small for your eyes to see you usually use the direction of the pain to investigate that most likely it is there there are many many things that the eye of man cannot see there is a limit to which the vision of man 2020 we are told are we together you may need to take advantage of a telescope to see beyond certain ranges so there are realities beyond the scope of sight and beyond the scope of science colossians 1 16 please it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven follow carefully and that are in the earth visible and invisible so there are things visible and there are things invisible please note that invisible does not mean unreal our concept of reality is anything the frame of our eyes our ears our hands and all of that our senses can relate with but there are realities beyond the scope of sight and there are realities beyond the scope of science the bible says visible and invisible things 
For instance, the realm of the spirit is a real realm that when all is said and done, it is that realm that most people are going to live in. So we are given an advantage of duality of realms. You have a spirit or you are a spirit and then you live in a mortal body and that mortal body gives you access to the earth. Are we together? But you are not a body. Your body as you have been taught is just an instrument of execution. When people die, we call it death. But the realm of the spirit never calls it death. Because our idea of death is to cease to live. But that is only correct from our realm. From the realm of the spirit, when you say someone has died, they look at you with shock and wonder. Because there is no such thing as cessation of living. We see that in scripture. Are we together? The rich man and Lazarus, scene one. The rich man is there enjoying his prosperity and finances. Lazarus is there suffering and then sin two. Both of them die. And we see that they were both alive in another dimension. One in Abraham's bosom. The other one was perishing in hell and he was crying. He had intelligence. His intelligence was still with him. Deep water in your finger and please quench my thirst. And that was not possible and he said all right please can you allow the man to come back to the earth and preach to my brethren that there is something i need to change about my life and my ways and he said no they have moses and they have the laws let them listen to them there was intelligent communication when jesus stopped breathing in the earth as we know he did not cease to live he went to hades the place of the dead satan being a spirit is alive jesus being a spirit alive the departed saints that he preached to, according to the gospel of Peter, Peter taught us in his epistle that he preached to the departed saints, they believed and he led them together. It was a triumphant entry. Are we together? When he resurrected from the dead, the Bible says graves of the saints that were once departed were opened and the people came out and walked all through the streets of Jerusalem. This may be a word of comfort for someone. The moment you see your loved one close his eye or her eye, never to open it again, find comfort. It was just the body that stopped his assignment here. But life is real, more real. It is difficult for us to comprehend this because you were not given the privilege of consciousness before your arrival here. Consciousness began for you when you wore this mortal body. So it's difficult for you to relate with the reality of that realm, except and unless God gives you the privilege of visionary experiences. Supernatural and visionary experiences can train your spirit to at least a bit to understand how the realm of the spirit works. Are you understanding me so far? Yes. We need to walk by faith because there are realities beyond us. Would you believe if I told you that there were angels all around this place? You don't have to wait until someone is shouting and you say, oh, truly they are angels. No. The Bible says so, you see. Because the faith is based on what God said. The very foundation of faith is built upon the person and the speakings of God. Let me repeat myself, that the very foundation of Bible faith is built upon the person of God and the speakings of God. What regulates the entire faith economy in the spirit is what God has said. If you extract what God has said, there is no possibility for manifesting Bible faith again because Bible faith must have a basis and that basis is the word of God. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God verse 2 it says the same was in the beginning with God verse 3 it says all things I like this were made by him the word and outside of his influence and participation was not anything made that was made the second reason why we need faith and we need to walk by faith as one of the forces for commanding greater works is that faith commits God in the affairs of men. Faith commits God in the affairs of men. This is profound. Faith commits God in the affairs of men. John eleven forty, that it has to do with your conviction. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto you that if thou wouldest believe, Thou shouldest see the glory of God. You're walking in faith 
and you're walking by faith has an implication in that it commits God in the affairs of your life. And as you know from scripture, that the moment God gets committed, Luke 1 37, to the affairs of men, impossibility vanishes. It says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Faith has a unique ability to commit God in the affairs of our lives. You want to do greater works? It must be by faith. And I've taught you here that faith, number one, represents your confidence in God, who God is and the integrity of his person, your conviction, your persuasion, your confidence. Number two, faith is the action that you take as proof that you believe God. The action that you take as proof that you believe God in order to commit him as touching the affairs of your life. So when it has to do with Bible faith, two things are involved. Number one, your conviction, your depth of persuasion about who God is and the integrity of his person. Number two, you must take action, actions of obedience. Jonah took action, but his action was in disobedience. So it's not just blind action. You must act according as God has directed. If it be thou, bid me come and he said come if the guy sat back that would be action but not action of faith most people act but act in disobedience if god says go left and you go right you are not walking by faith albeit you are you are acting but not by faith are we together are you seeing that the entire economy of faith depends on who god is and what he has said so the foundation for bible faith as you have been taught is to find out what god has said what has he said i refer you to my message exceeding great and precious promises a compendium a capture of everything god has said that provides an advantage to the believer in christ ephesians 1 and verse 3 the bible says that god had given us had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Please hear me. If you do not learn to walk by faith, you will be limited. You will be crying and blaming God whereas supernatural blessings are on their way coming to you. Just because you cannot see it. I gave an example last week. I hope you still remember about someone who would leave Lagos. Was it last week? yes that if someone took a flight from lagos and you were waiting for the person at the airport coming to abuja did you know that a 50 minutes flight and for about 46 to 47 minutes of that flight from the time it lifts you are not going to see the plane yet you are aware and you believe you are convinced that the person did not die in the sky is on his way coming and you are there standing are we together occasionally there might be a, a, a delay maybe some minutes but then you see the plane and then it arrives when you are going home from koinonia did you know that for over 98 percent of the journey you do not see your house and yet you believe it is there what makes you believe that the house has not disappeared now while you are here you believe that the food you left in your kitchen is still there waiting for you am i right on that this is not word of knowledge this is experience hallelujah where else should the food be are we together <laughs> by faith so when god says deuteronomy 28 1 and 2 that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do all his commandments which i command you this day that the lord thy god will set thee on high above the nations of the earth above how many nations Koinonia, please answer me. Above how many nations? Do you believe that? Above all the nations. And you see, while he's saying that, you are looking at the fact that you do not have a job. While he's saying that, you are looking at the fact that you do not have, you know, maybe some kind of qualification. And yet he does not change what he's saying because of your condition. Powerful. At any given point in your life, 
there are at least two reports that tell you and your destiny at the face it is up to you to choose whose report you would believe this is the character of faith there are men sitting down here i was so blessed by the testimony of the dear lady feeling pains and having pains and i like the fact that she took responsibility to at least go to the hospital but that did not stop her from releasing her faith bible faith produces bible faith produces bible faith produces ladies and gentlemen what you call koinonia today by the grace of god is a product of faith there are no guarantees in life nobody gives you any guarantee anywhere we live in a world that is obsessed with guarantees unfortunately it does not exist calling your uncle your guarantee is a risk in fact calling yourself your guarantee is a risk calling the harbor in your village a guarantee is a risk because when men sleep only god wakes men there is something that is common to all men the moment they sleep the harbor must be must receive grace to wake up to continue what he's doing i lay me down and i slept the psalmist said i waked for the lord waking people is exclusive is exclusively the 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 prerogative and the office of god not devil anywhere i can tell you that so when people act as if they have your destiny in their hand tell them make sure you don't sleep yes sir yes sir by tomorrow if you are still there call me another name hey be careful be careful because the sun is going down be careful Mm. very arrogant world that forgets that there is a god that rules over the affairs of men have you forgotten nebuchadnezzar a man who believed that he had everything the entire globe in his hand and he could manipulate the destinies of men and he said make the fiery furnace seven times hotter and they threw those young boys there on account of their trust and their belief in Jesus, they said, we're not taught to dishonor authority, but as touching this one, we're not careful to tell you, our God will deliver us. But even if he does not deliver us, we count him faithful. And they saw the fourth man in the fire. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know if they themselves saw the fourth man. Because the Bible does not seem to record that they themselves saw the fourth man. We know that the man who saw the fourth man was the king himself and the other people. All we know is that they believed that the fire had no power over them. The faith was on their own part because they were not, they didn't have to see the fourth man to enter the fire. And most likely while they were in the fire, they probably did not see the fire. You see, when you are walking by faith, usually it is those who are the onlookers who will be seeing the marvelous things that god is doing you just know you are obeying god you are in that fire and you are walking that fire out you are in that den of lions and yet it has no power waiting who will not enter the fire when you see the fourth man already waiting it is easy to give when you have an alert of 10 million in your account then you smuggle out 1,000 and say, God, you see what I gave you? Is that really faith? That is charity. Are we together? He said, true faith, Abel offered. How about Abraham? I will make you a father of many nations. No evidence, no Isaac. And the Bible tells us, as in the order of men and women, he had become very old and sarah even even when she had gone past as in the manner of women the bible says and yet they counted god faithful you find that in romans chapter 4 that he wavered not i like abraham he wavered not please find that scripture for me romans 4 and verse look for it verse i don't know what verse that is now that he counted god faithful are we together he considered not the deadness of sarah's womb are we together verse 20 thank you he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but was strong in faith in fact back down go to 18 18 it says who against hope do you see that 
the foundation of faith is that there is hopelessness already hopelessness against hope believed in hope that he might become the father imagine if you saw abraham 90 years abraham how are you and he says i'm still holding on to god's word and you say abraham you are still at this madness called christianity i know he spoke to me it's not a lie and he himself will go to god and say god why are you doing this to me seeing that i go childless okay here is Eliezer in my house you somebody in my house who respects me to have children for me and god says no it will come from you i will hold on through the storm and i will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men the lifter of men yes i will hold on through the storm i will hold on through You're the lifter of men, the lifter of men. Koinonia, hear me. It does not just pay to serve Jesus, it pays to believe him. I don't know what he's told you. I don't know what he's told your family. I don't know what he said concerning your health, concerning your ministry. He saw the prevailing circumstances when he said it, and he does not plan to change what he has said. It's up to you to believe his report. Hear me, at every point in your Christian experience, you will be, you will be met by at least two conflicting reports. The reports of men, the reports of ill health, the report of society, the report of the present day economy, globally speaking. Or whose report, God's report, the integrity of God as captured in scripture. You are a man of God here, apostle, where will the bills come from? You are a parent, school fees has been increased, multiple folds, rent increased, multiple fold, the amount to buy your house, to do whatever it is. Perhaps you are here struggling with all kinds of things and your faith is really shaking. Can I tell you? I know a God who is merciful and kind faithful and gracious you know that song i'm the apple of his eyes the i like this part The message for you here is hold on God is still as faithful as you've known him to be don't allow negative situations so this is how my life will be I thought by now a job would have come I want you to still hold on in the name of Jesus the devil is a liar I thought by now the health I I, 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 I prayed I submitted my prayer request and I thought by now I'll be free I want you to count him faithful count him faithful you're not the first to go through what you're going through he's called faithful and true please sit down you want to command greater works man of God waiting for a destiny helper to bring all the money for you be before you begin to pray and plan to have the building you will never build anything in your whole life mm. start writing the budget with zero naira in your account start it's an act of faith are we together
be careful about this over this scientific approach to Christianity now science is important I just acknowledge science but over dependence on intellect can rob you of an opportunity to walk by faith can I tell you no matter what you are getting from God no matter how cheap it is if it is God that will be the giver faith must be required faith God will route you through a path that will that will demand that you believe him so he says follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise it says and abraham after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise is someone learning we must obtain grace to walk by faith anything god tells me i believe him i don't wait until i see any evidence i believe him koinonia is a great nation i believe him you are going to raise mighty men after the order of Genesis 17 and verse 6. This is what God told me and I believe with all my heart. Genesis 17, 6. I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. This is what God told me. He didn't say it yesterday. He didn't say it last year. He didn't say it 10 years ago. Waiting until you see the evidence. You will only waste your time and not walk by faith dare to believe god dare to obey god dare to act in keeping with what he has told you and watch the god of wonder the god of wonder arise for you every testimony you see shared here is the end point of the journey of faith the end point of the journey of faith usually when you start you start with nothing except what god has said the raw material for your destiny essentially is the word of god if he has said it is sufficient to start the journey the same word that caused you to begin the journey will keep the things you need somewhere in your path if you never take the step you will not meet what you need in the journey what you need for the journey will not be given at the point you start uh -uh. The only thing that will be given at the point of the journey is the Holy Spirit and the Word. That is sufficient for the journey. And you start one step after the other. Falling down but standing up. Getting up. Oh God, what is this? I don't understand you. You promised me that you're going to take care of me. You asked me to come down to Abuja. Now I'm in Abuja. It's been six months. I don't even know where my next meal will come from. And you hear a word from the Spirit while you are praying. Turn your pain. Turn everything you're going through to praise. I am giving you a testimony that will bless people tomorrow. And in the midst of your tears, you may not know what to do. And you are taking the time to pray and say, Lord, I still count you faithful. I thought by now a job will come. I thought by now destiny, the helpers would have arrived. But I say thank you. Can I tell you, when you thank God in the midst of storms, you really have faith. When you thank God in the midst of your result, that is praise report. But when you are thanking God when you have not seen anything. Hallelujah. Learn to thank him. We live in a world that prides in complaining. God, you have not done this. You gave me tea, no bread. How am, I, how am I supposed to take it? And God says, you just keep thanking me and taking the tea with gratitude and bread will arrive. The force of faith. Let's hurry up. God bless you so much. We believe the word of the Lord has come with so much graces and with so much power, reaching you all the way from this part of the earth. And like Paul said in First Thessalonians chapter one and in verse five, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and much assurance. Let me pause there. I believe the word of the Lord which you have received from the mouth of his servant, Apostle Joshua Selman, has been a mighty blessing to you. It didn't just come with word alone, it came with so much power. The revelation of the mind of the Lord, knowing the intent and the will of God for your life, it matters so, so much. And I believe convictions have been stirred in your heart because Paul said, it didn't just come with word, but in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. Do well to keep your spiritual life 
updated every time. That is the reason why, by the message of God, Reflector Hub TV has been mandated to this space, bringing you the consistent will and mind of the Lord through His servant, Apostle Jesus' servant. I would like you to do well to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button and also strike the notification bell so as to stay in touch with our regular and constant uploads so as to set your spirit man on fire. God bless you. Love you so much.